This is the scene I hate. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I don't hate you know, the... Steve, there's been some questions of your sexuality for no, no, years. No, 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 no. Uh. <laughs> I'm happily divorced. Um, the, uh, no, the, the issue here, I love the scene. I love the... It's just the context. It's kind of an old-fashioned... The whole movie's kind of an old-fashioned fam, family homage to these horror films, except for some of the gore, and yet the movie sort of stops. Well, I think it could have been placed better. It could have been worked into the screenplay in a more appropriate fashion. Okay, well, now, now you're but, blaming well, no, me for no, this. No, so no I'm not. Have, I'm not. No, I'm just you, simply you, saying that Linnea's are. fans would expect this. If you're getting a movie with Linnea Quigley and you don't have a scene right. like that, somebody's going to get, you know what I mean? So It's uh, not that I object to the scene, but I, I remember saying to you, Fred, the first time Linnea appears in this movie, she's naked in a shower. What I'm saying, why did you just put it later? And you said that's later? as it should be. Oh, and well, I, I probably mean, did, but I say a lot of things, well, Steve, it, that don't make sense. It's just that we wrote the script, you turned the script in, you said, this sucks, do it again. So we did the script again. Well, all right. And we didn't have time to think about these All things. All right, we'll take a poll. You know, we have a we have a little Yahoo group. I'm there. sorry, I don't we need to no, take no, no. a poll. I don't need a poll. Yeah, I've you, got you reviews to, of yeah. this movie that I say know, that, I, that, that, okay, that right. I'd rather swallow a shotgun barrel than see another Steve Latshaw. But they didn't say they'd rather swallow a shotgun shell than see Lene Quigley naked. <sighs> and, and, all I'm saying is that it could have been placed somewhere else more uh, I'm appropriate. Uh, Let's just drop it. I'm not going to let you. Ruin I wasn't my, even there. Ruin my Jesus commentary. <laughs> this is this is it for me. Ruin your commentary. Oh, is this where the guy? Is this where the guy says, "Did you leave the porch light on again?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, this is great. And he gets up and he goes over to the door, and he gives the kids a bunch of shit. And then he goes off and he leaves the fucking porch light on. <laughs> he didn't turn um, it on. Okay. Well, <laughs> again, you're in a situation here. It's like. They used to describe Roger Corman. I, you're, you're, you're calling cut. You're not even taking the time to, you know, once the gate is clear, it's like, we're over here. You're already moving to yes, show the I understand. You know, we had a limited amount of, mo of money, obviously. Oh, do tell, Steve. And a limited amount of time. <laughs> I think And I it know. was all we could do to get this film done. I know. I know. You know, you, you're... Alfalfa, Alfalfa I'm sorry. And you're, the princess. Okay, you know, let's get off the actors for a minute. They're good kids. You, 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 <laughs> the, the problem here is you're sitting here giving me a ration of grief, oh, grief. about little little details that, that, you know, it's like what Lou Costello used to say, you know, when they said, know. You, you know, your cigar's in the wrong hand. Well, if they're looking at the cigar, then we're in serious trouble. I mean, what was I supposed to do? You didn't give me any time. I didn't give you any time, Steve. I wasn't didn't give me any money. There. All I'm saying is that is if I'm sitting at home, because I had to watch this, I had to watch this in order to come down and do this track, so I, I had the opportunity to see this again recently, and I mean, that just kind of leapt out at me. Well, it's not a big deal. I mean, <laughs> oh, God, aren't we sensitive today? It was a fucking Saturday morning. It's not your time of the month. What is it? You know, this film has a lot of big fans. What's her face? Uh, what's that, Shannon? Corville, Crewville, Crew Girl. She's gonna dig this. She's gonna dig that we just mentioned her name too. Um, maybe I shouldn't do that, but uh, well, she's a big fan of this film. She's been writing me about this for years. That's my point. Is that despite she's a Linnea all the fan. little criti critical digs, including yours, there are fans. It's not a critical dig, Steve. Come on, man. This is uh, this is the see. The, if I really thought it was something, I would ask you guys to go back and shoot it over again. <laughs> as I recall, you did. <laughs> So Steve, I actually, I actually think this is one of your best films. I know you think I'm picking on you, but I'm not really. I'm just. Well, I know you, that. I, know, wait, 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 wait. I just you know that somebody this, sitting no, at home no. is going to say the same thing I'm saying, so I'm going to say it first. Okay, you say this is one of my best films. I what, really believe what that. What do you mean by that? I think that uh, I like the story. I, I think uh, it's suspenseful. I think it's got a certain I, amount I of mood. I don't think that's what you mean by that. What do you think I mean? Jesus, <laughs> look. Okay, so you're, you're getting kind of testy here. Let's just, let's just stay with the old. Oh, door stuck. Door stuck. Door stuck. You, when you, okay. I That's, tell you, I'm looking at houses right now. I gotta tell you this story. I'm looking at houses right now because I'm, I'm I'm thinking of getting a new house. Went to a house, couldn't get the door open. They're they banging and banging and banging. Finally, the door opens, and I said to the guy, the realtor, I said, you know, I said when a door sticks like that, it's just like in a horror movie. You know, later. In your life, you're going to need to get that door open, and it ain't going to open. Well, that's what we professional screenwriters call foreshadowing. Uh, you see, we put that in there so that the audience will expect a problem with the door at a critical point in the film. Well, that, I did. Well, not I don't like, know. Not like we told You me. know, I'm getting plenty of that trademark Fred Ray sarcasm sitting right here next to him. <laughs> well, you know, you kind of have to have a sense of humor about these things, Steve. 
Yeah, okay. Hey, listen, it's better than having people t pick apart your two and a half million dollar movie. Yeah. <laughs> Here, say this for me. Uh, this is this is a trademark Fred Ray line. Say, gee, it, it isn't brain surgery. Say that. <laughs> oh, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Okay, so no more fun. Ryan could take it or leave it. He came out here and, and was Andrew Stevens actually offered him a, a shot at a lead in one of the kids' films he was doing, or to play four days in a western that you directed called uh, The Shooter. And I said, Ryan, do you want to do it? And he, I, I said, if you play the lead, you're going to work for 12 days, and you're, you're going to do schoolwork, and you're not going to get to play. Or do you want to do the cowboy movie? And he goes, I'll do the cowboy movie. Yeah. And he worked for four days, got his... Sag rates and bought himself a bicycle, and that was, I think, the last thing he did. He just the last job he held too, I think, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's doing very well for himself these days. Uh, I'm just kidding. I like I like Ryan. You would hardly recognize him these days. He usually has a gun in his hand. <laughs> you know, paintball gun. Um, let's try to keep the families out of this, okay? Hey man, you I just went on to this whole got, thing about I got, Ryan. I got plenty. I just ask if you enjoyed. There's doing a lot this. I could be saying. Oh, come on. He, he, he looks like he's having a good time. He was having a good time. I just was making the observation that we would wake him up, shoot a shot, he'd go back to sleep, we'd do a relight, shoot him again. He was a, it was a hard for him. Well, most kids at 2 a.m. want to be in their beds asleep. Yeah. And uh, we're getting close to the stuck door. Uh, that the, there was an important dramatic point in the film. Yes, uh, a, 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 a foreshadowing. Stuck, stuck door shot. A little garlic hanging on the wall there in the kitchen too. I noticed. Yeah, we. Well, uh, yes, it is garlic. That's very, very observant of you. <laughs> uh, you're. I tell you. You got eyes like a. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've had to watch this too many times. Eyes like a. Here we go. The door's uh, stuck. Oh, all stuck door. Right and it's kind of stuck and kind of not. And then you have a little. It looks like an homage to the Leopard Man. Is that the? Yes, actually, this was intentional. It was the, uh, the scene where the little girl, mommy, won't let the little girl in, and there's, there's a horrible thing happens outside, and the implication is that he's been slaughtered, oh my God, we're and then taken away. And that was definitely a nod to the, the Leopard Man, big Val Luton fan that I am. It shows in, in your work. Uh, is that, I'm sorry, that's the patented Fred Ray Sarkis. The, the, the Luton influences. No. Which it turns out, just shut up. <laughs> this, turns out to be, this turns out to be Jude. I'm trying to explain something here. This turns you out to be. Do you have a big crush on her? Who? Uh, Rebecca, the, the absolutely. Catherine, Catherine Witt. No, Catherine, uh, I'd known Cat. Cat and Pathy. I'd known Pat and Kathy for. <laughs> Cat and Pathy. That's good. That's, I got back up again. That was just like a bad meal. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't drink anymore. I freeze it now and eat it like a popsicle. Um, no. Here we go. Here's the famous line. There's Jim's bike. And there's his head. <laughs> and she's looking at it from the back of his head. She recognized him by the haircut, I guess. Well, she doesn't really say the line. Oh. I'm just implying. Whenever we screen this, people would say, and there's his head. I was like Rocky Horror. Heck, heck, heckling from You probably audience. could throw toilet paper rolls, too, uh, when you screen this. That never happened. Just like Rocky Horror. Because the kids are all throwing toilet rolls. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Right. And, you know, they waste an entire roll just to get that what's on the red guy's roof. So one of the whole rolls sitting up there. It was not a, an entire... Hey, did you ever toilet paper in anybody's house? I didn't. I never did. So maybe that's the way it's supposed to be done. Um, you know, we did the best we could under the, the circumstances that we were making this film under. Okay? You know, you're always apologizing. I don't think you need I'm to. I'm not apologizing. I, I'm just saying, no, I'm you don't need to. Things. You need. You don't need to. The film, I think, is very, very good. I'm really a, Okay, you know, it's great. Fan. I appreciate the fact that you say that. <laughs> you get a little snide dig in there, and then you know it's a great film. It's your best film ever. Oh, like, like As you if, take a bunch of shots of me during that Alien Dead commentary that I, that I did not put on the image. Uh, you mean the John Ford influence? Yes. Okay, you know, right, it's fine. Your way. This is it for me, you know? You, you know, could have been a little more respectful considering the... I'm, I, let me tell you something. I'm giving this film the biggest release I possibly can. We're putting every kind of extra on here that we can dig up. 
I mean, we've gone and found the trailer after the company that made the film went out of business. You know, and, and I, to be honest with you, who the hell else but me, Steve, would be putting this this back out? I mean, it's been called a shit pickle in some reviews. Uh, it's been, I mean, who else but me? I mean, and at Halloween and and with all these extras, I mean, it's hard for I, you, it's, I, it's hold, hard to sit here and say that me, I don't care me a minute. how the movie Fred, turns out. We discussed this commentary before we ever got into this, and you specifically stated you would not make any reference to the shit pickle comment. <laughs> Well, I'd never heard that before. Okay, I know, and you laughed your ass off I when know, you told me. You were laughing when you you said shit pickle. I know, but as a matter of fact, you said shit pickle more than <laughs> once. You said that's so funny. Shit pickle, <laughs> shit pickle. Well, you know what's funny to me? You're making me laugh. I'll dude. tell you what, you can sit here and do this fucking commentary yourself. <laughs> oh, come on, Steve. Jesus Christ. You know, Joe Bob. <laughs> this is great. Uh, Joe Bob Briggs gave it seven. Uh, Driving Academy Award nominations. Uh, I would have liked to use a quote for that. <laughs> well, I wonder what. Oh shit! I wonder what became of him. So uh, anyway, they're uh, they're burying. <laughs> they're burying. Um, uh, they're burying Ryan Latshaw alive here, and um, no. Steve had to step out and get a glass of water. It's a pity that these that we don't have the ability to stop the. Uh, tape on these and edit them, but we uh, do these in our offices now, and uh, it's a kind of straight through thing when we tell people we're just not going to turn things things off. And, uh, uh well, it sounds like somebody's... Well, what's, what? Over here. Now what? You wanna, let me guess, you forgot your fucking car keys. You know, that's like that old story where no, they storm just... out, and then they come back, and because they've left their car keys. I'm not going to let you ruin my DVD commentary on this film. Oh. All I can say, Steve, is that I, I hope you have just as much fun if we ever decide to reissue Dark Universe. What's that other one? Oh, we don't own the rights to Biohazard 2, so I guess you won't ever get this opportunity again. This was uh, our homage to European horror. Those are fake legs. Because really? I was I was horrified at the thought of actually burying my son in the dirt, so we cooked up fake legs. <clears throat> uh, I had a lot of issues at that point in my life. Uh, now you wouldn't hesitate to bury your son. No, as a matter of fact, I'm looking up for reasons to do it. Uh, okay, so this is um, I had to get back my train of thought. I'm trying to kind of wash the anger away and just focus. Oh, for God's sake, oh, look. I was just kidding. The you. rubber, rubber. Why was the cross made out of rubber? Um, convenience, money, time. But I mean, wouldn't a real stick have been cheaper? I mean, just like a stick, I mean. I, <laughs> I, I mean, hadn't thought of that. There's a go. Leave my mom alone. Or oh, he was doing the best he could, and we looped the line. Okay. No, I almost looped. That was my, that was me doing. It. It's a great Leave line. Mom. It's a great line. Leave my mom and dad alone. Yeah. That is a good line. Coming out of a grave like that. With Leave my mom. mom and dad alone. Okay, so here he goes. He's turning the cross upside down. Come and get me, pumpkin man. Come, come and get me. Big heroic moment for for the kid. Come and get me, Pumpkin Man. Come and get me, Pumpkin Man. And that's the end of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Jacko. Dear. As we used to say on the set, it's a steaming pile of art. See, this is the, this is the linkage. This is the brilliance of this film, is at the end, we're giving the scythe back to Arthur Kelly, who is his great-great-grandfather or whatever. And this is basically ending the cycle of evil as they walk through the trees into the sunlight, into the new dawn, not only of this day, but of, of their lives and, uh, and, and the lives of, of this family. And I think that's the... It's uplifting for sure. It's, it's, it's a moment. And I, oh. bottom line, I appreciate the... Um, well, Chance Steve, I really, I really do. I really do like your film. And I've, I've always thought that it was underappreciated by everybody. Okay, well then, that's I mean, great. But just, you know, you know the sarcasm is a bit much. Oh, you know, Steve, we've been friends out here for a long time. And we've done a lot of work together. No, no, and, uh, no, no. We've been acquaintances. Oh, fuck you. Okay, that's it for me. I'm, I'm done. Well, fuck you, too.